Hi everybody, welcome to Am I the Asshole Podcast. Today we have a very special guest. You know him as a stand-up comedian, co-host of TNB, a YouTube and Twitch show about Dungeons and & Dragons, and the co-host of What a Time Pod, Eli Uden. Welcome to the program. Hello, what's up? How are you? You know, I'm uh, I'm here in Arizona <laughs> with my folks, so I'm uh, binging on like Olive Garden and Mexican food and oh, various yeah. local chains that I do. They love the chains. At. My parents love Olive Garden, which is fine by me. I'm a fan. I know people think they're better than it. I'm not. I remember, yeah, like in college, like my my dad would come, my parents would come visit, and it was in Michigan. It was Ann Arbor, and there's good restaurants around there. But my dad, for some reason, like loved. I don't think, even think he knew it was a chain. It was a Carabas, and every time he would. <laughs> visit he was like can we go to carabas and we're like no like i'd rather go somewhere it's also carabas isn't even that close you have to like drive out to it i was like we're not driving out to carabas when there's like good restaurants around here he didn't know it was a chain that's so funny i don't think he knew because there's not any around i'm from dc so i don't think there's any around there but I, i'm also <laughs> with you on the like on the well it's, it, it fits for the podcast i always hate it when if you ever meet one of those people where if you're like oh i'm gonna go get chipotle and they're like why would you get chipotle when you could get real mexican food and it's like because they're different and i want chipotle right it's like shut up <laughs> yeah. like yeah it's not that you're wrong you're right it's not real mexican food and that's what i want to eat yeah. fake Mexican. Food. I want Chipotle. I don't like, yeah, I could go get like a, you know, a burrito that's like a wet burrito covered in, you know, salsa verde or whatever, but I don't want that. Like, I want Chipotle. I want a fast food burrito. So I was telling you that uh, I'm at my parents' house and I thought you made a great observation that, you know, you said you try to diet and keep it lean, but whenever you go to your parents' house, there's too many snacks. Yeah. It's, it's almost reversed at a certain point where I, it used to be like, you know, when you're in college and eating like shit all the time and stuff, you like go home and that's when you would eat healthy but I think I actually eat unhealthier when I'm home now because yeah, parents have snack supply on like, you know, like I don't even have many snacks in my apartment just because I know if I have them, I'll eat them, but they'll have like multiple types of cookies. They'll have like Oreos and they're like, and if you're not feeling like Oreos, we also have Chips Ahoy. It's like, Jesus Christ. I feel like I gain like even when it's not the holidays, just a gain like three pounds every time I go home. Yeah, it sounds like you use a similar strategy to me. I'm just like, I'm not going to keep that stuff because I know I will eat it. I guess when you're 65, you suddenly have the wisdom and the willpower to have a selection of cookies and then not eat 20 Oreos and six Chewy Chips Ahoy in one sitting. I can't do it. I'm eating it. Yeah, it's I just and then you like there's like all the bargaining for different types. Like I like those Tate's cookies. You know, the oh, I love the Tate, the nice yeah. light cookie, crispy cookie. Yeah. And then they come in those sleeves of like seven, which is like more than you really should eat at one time. <laughs> but you're also yeah, like, yeah. I broke the seal on the seven. So I need to right. eat seven of these. Right. And then to add everything else, last time I was home, my parents had also discovered the Tate. So now fucking Tates were in there as well. Oh, I was man. Like, I can't resist the Tate. I was going, I was going nuts, dude. Now, I asked you if you had any kind of questions of etiquette and you brought up uh, splitting the bill at a restaurant with rich people what's yeah. uh what's the deal there you sound scarred almost when you say it. it's not scarred and it's like i want to say it's like i don't consider the people assholes at all fr- friends of mine but um and there's a whole there was a whole friends episode on this so it's not exactly new territory <laughs> but it also that also means it's been around for a long time and it was just one of those things where i went to a it was a surprise birthday party at a restaurant in new york and like it was uh people mostly visiting so it wasn't like you know if it was me and mm. a bunch of comics this wouldn't that doesn't happen everyone's <laughs> like very right. cognizant of what they're spending but the bigger problem was the, like when people are just like it'll be easier for us to just split the bill down the middle you know like even oh, God. and yeah that's already like a thing because you know if you're if you're not if you're i think i was a dog walker at the time <laughs> so it's like okay you know i'm just not gonna get like big mixed drinks that cost 16 dollars and shit especially in new york but then everyone's everyone's obviously getting drinks so that's already gonna do it and then the worst is when you're splitting it and then people get a lot of shit for the table there's no way for you not to seem like the asshole if you're like i'm not gonna eat that if they're like oh i'm gonna get you know we're gonna get this this appetizer spread for the table and you're like well i don't like that so i don't want to be included like you can't start right. that you just have to so i remember it being like uh i think by all all said and done i think it was like an almost a hundred dollar meal Ooh, <laughs> per person brutal. where i was like cool this is most of my money for the rest of the month but you also it's even worse when it's a birthday because you don't want to you know tamp down the fun by like reacting right. so you're just like nice here's my 
credit card. I hope it goes through. Right, That's right. right. Yeah, I think it's a uh, it's kind of an interesting, uh, you know, it kind of relates to politics in a sense, just being like, oh, well, everyone can pay their fair share. And it's like, well, that's not equal. Like we need a regressive, you yeah. know, or a, what is it? A progressive system so that, you know, if you make more money, then you should cover more of the bill. Yeah, this is ridiculous. I mean, I don't drink. So that's how this manifests for me. You know, it's. Oh, well, that like, runs you, up the bill. That's restaurants make it's their crazy. money. It doubles like, the bill. And aren't they like restaurants are just like they're like, if we don't sell alcohol, we're in the red automatically because it just you yeah. never make yeah. money. They make all their money off wine and drinks. And some people, you know, like go through like three margaritas at a restaurant. I'm not criticizing the amount of margarita that is, you know, get I like to get a little ripped up here and there, but I still can't just because the prices at a restaurant are always so high. I always have like, dude, I'll still drink Coke at restaurants. I don't give a shit. And then I'll be like, hell yeah, dude. Be like, let's I'll have a reef, you know, I'll have a, a unlimited refill Coca-Cola and then we yeah. can go to the dive bar across the street after dinner and then I can get a bunch of fucking high, high lifts or whatever. I had a friend who was like uh, a finance guy and he had some fancy term, a reconciliation. And so we all went out to dinner and it was a big complicated receipt. Yeah. And he said, and I, and I honestly think this is a classy move, you know, because nobody wants to be the guy, like you said, being like, hey, I know it's birthday, but like, I kind of hate spin art dip. So like, I'm not paying for that. Yeah. yeah. I think it's like a fair move to be like, hey guys, I'll, I'll handle the bill. I'll Venmo everybody. You know, you don't necessarily be the one who has to put down the money. You can have someone put it down on their card. Then they reap all the points. Oh, yeah. I love and, the points. Yeah. And then you do an after the fact kind of he used this term reconciliation, which is very Catholic. And then we'll, <laughs> you know, we'll fucking settle out in a spreadsheet. You know what yeah. I mean? And then it's like, I think that's way, one way to approach this because it can be awkward. You get an eight top, you know, even a six top. You don't want to be the guy who's like, hey, I don't drink. You know, people get pissed. You're, you're killing the momentum of the night. Yeah. And birthday party encourages like even if it's not your birthday people go wild like i remember like i said before it was a fun fucking time and it was i was yeah. pissed about it for like a day i wasn't pissed i was just like dang good restaurant have you ever been to jeepney in uh East i Village? actually have been to jeepney it's like Fil filipino food yeah right? it's good as fuck it was jeepney and so like but also people were getting like stunt drinks like there was one thing where it was a dude i didn't know who got one of these huge stunt drinks that comes in a hollowed out pineapple and costs fucking a lot of money and then like didn't finish it and you almost want to be like you're gonna fucking drink that whole thing because yeah, i'm paying back. for a fifth of that like go, go drink it um lick it like a dog out of the pineapple <laughs> yeah so and it was fine and to be honest i was just thinking i think honestly that i broke even on that dinner because the guy whose birthday it was he came to new york a different time and he was doing he did some job where he got paid a lot it was like a consultant thing mm -hmm. so he flew, flew around he we went to a um sushi place me and him and like one other guy and he expensed the whole thing so i think honestly i'm even on it you broke even now we got one heck of an app for you guys eli provided some extremely juicy you said you're an art school student and mm -hmm. then you were raised jewish but you're not actually well you're if of jewish by blood, not of jewish descent yeah if and if if you asked some orthodox jew he probably would disapprove of me saying that i'm right. jewish especially because even if you are born jewish you know if you're serious it has to be your mom that's jewish or something yes so. yes i've heard that rule mm -hmm. so because you were adopted so we'll, we'll yeah. get into that and then you said depression so we got a great app for you we actually have four <laughs> situations because i just got i got greedy with all this juice so. yeah here we go. Our second story of the day, would I be the asshole for not paying for my son's art college? Uh, okay. But first, we got a quickie here. I thought this was pretty juicy. AITA for letting my BF's friends draw me naked. I'm in college. He's an art student. His friend are art students. I was approached by one of them to model for a class of 10. It paid and was about an hour. I said, sure. I later find out it's naked. I'm fine with that. I signed the forms. I go out there in a robe, see his friends, disrobe, get comfy and pose. An hour later, I get paid. The teacher thanks me. He talks to his friends a bit look at the work it's all good later bf and i are at a friend's place and he noticed a piece of art hanging up it's my nude he gets upset said i should have cleared it with him his friends and i try to calm him down saying it's art nothing wrong with it not sexual and he just goes on about how everyone has seen me naked now and it's different because i'm not a quote-unquote nameless model aita should i have made sure he was fine with it beforehand Ooh. This is from my art school experience and stuff. I didn't do a lot. I did a bit of live nude drawing because um, you have yeah. to as a curriculum. I didn't do a ton of it. I, I think there's like three things that are wrong here. First of all, it's a little weird. Approaching your friend's girlfriend to model nude is just kind of like, that's weird. Like, I don't know why you'd do that. Yes. And yes. 
I'm on board. So that's the actual thing is whatever. Like if you've, if you go, especially if you go to like, have you ever been in a studio environment where people are doing a live figure drawing with a nude model? It's not, it's not what they make it look like in like sitcoms and like college movies. It's oh, like, really? it's, I mean, you're spaced out. It's usually like pretty cold and it's like very not a sexual environment, like at all. Cause you're like surrounded by people. It does not feel like you're, mm. you know. And also, usually when you do it in a college, it's like some weirdo from town. It's like some towny guy that just like <laughs> nobody's like like into it. The actual nude posing part that would be bad to get mad at because it's just something you do. Like if she'd been like, "I volunteered to do nude nude modeling," turned out your friend was in the class. Like you shouldn't get mad at that. It's whatever. Well, I think though it's interesting. She didn't tell him, right? I see a sin there. Yeah. Because you know, look, the reality is, does he have a right to tell her not to do? it of course not but mm -hmm. i think it's understandable on either side that this would be a notification situation yeah i think that goes without saying i think there's a breach of trust there you know same for a guy to a girl or in any kind of configuration like you're showing your naked body off there's an assumption that that's not happening you're getting naked for people even though the context is very neutral and i have to say like comparing this to like an only fans i i would not find this nearly as much of a breach i mean if my girlfriend were to say this i would probably be like all right yeah yeah, it's you know that's fine this is a specific context i don't know that i would like it but i i think i would let it fly whereas i think only fans i'd be like oh this is more of a conversation i don't i don't know if i can handle that yeah i i mean that's the thing is like yeah i guess you at least do the thing where it's like hey i got asked to do this thing and you know you can't tell anybody but you'd be like do you know i'm not gonna stop you from doing it like then if if made somebody uncomfortable be like i it makes me kind of uncomfortable but you can do it obviously i think this is one of those situations where it's just like the it should never have been created like that's how i feel about it because that to me it's so like that's not how that works in my mm -hmm. knowledge of stuff is that the idea of someone approaching their friend's girlfriend to model nude for their class is not the channel that goes through like that's not something that's done you know like when you have if you have a if you're in a nude drawing class See like this, and it says for a class of 10 students, if you're in an art class that's doing a new drawing, the, t the professor isn't like, hey, does anybody know someone? The professor would go get a model. Like it's there. It, that's why it's just like the whole setup is weird. And yeah. so I don't know if it's the asshole thing. I think, it, I think it's still, you're right. Like she should have mentioned, I'm surprised she didn't think it was weird. I, I would have been like, hey, just from me, I would be like, hey, your friend asked me to like model nude. Absolutely. Because um, it, it opens up questions where it's like, okay, why are you asking me? What about me made you want to ask me to, to nude model? Because it's either like, you're into me, which is really, then it is really yeah. bad. You know, it's like, do you know other women that you could have asked that aren't in a romantic relationship with anybody that you know? I guess, I'm, I I don't know if I think the asking is a sin because I, I feel you that it's weird. I certainly trust you there. It I wouldn't go like so far as to say to... sin, yeah, but it's just strange. Yeah, it's odd. It's odd. It's non-protocol, um, but I don't want to, I don't want to put too much like malice into it. For all I, for all I know, I think the situation you describe seems plausible the teacher's like hey we can't find someone so let me know if you know anyone yeah. maybe this girl is whatever she has some kind of vibe that says she'd be into it maybe she's beautiful and so he thinks well or she's she could just fit. need money yeah and then you do get paid yeah yeah she could need a gig i think it's also i would personally feel weird though you know if it was someone even not even a friend i guess that feels like a notify situation too like even an acquaintance like like even you if i if i was asking your girlfriend i'd be like hey man i, I guess i feel i would feel an obligation to run it by the other person just because yeah it does suggest interest it does there's something like a little sus about it that i would want to like mention it to my friend or even like an acquaintance yeah that's the other half of it is there's a lot of stuff like that where you would think either the guy whose girlfriend it was would have the opportunity to text his friend and be like can you tell me a little bit more about this like what exactly yeah. is going on it's one of those things where there's so many like like so many like small oversights that just start yes. adding up where i'm like yes there's too many things for me to be like, oh, I forgot these five parts. But it's like when it's that many things, it's like it seems like you were very intentionally trying to make sure I didn't know about this. Exactly. And I would say the other thing is like hanging it up in their apartment is weird. <laughs> like That's weird. And you absolutely should ask permission of the person who's in it at the very least before you hang it. It's, and I don't know if it had a, the face in it or whatever, but like one of the girls in, I was in art school with senior year, you know, most of the years you 
you don't have like your own studio or anything. But senior mm -hmm. year, when everybody's working on their projects, you do get like a private space. It's a shared space. So it's like lots of little cubicles, basically, where you can work on your senior project and stuff. And one of the girls in the art school did a nude self portrait of herself and then hung it up. And it was like really big in her studio. And everybody was even for an entire thing of art students from was sort of like, hey, like this is not comfortable. Like you not have like yeah. a huge nude painting of yourself up. And that's taking everybody else out of the equation. I, I think that this is like, it's weird because it's like, it's like trying to lean to me. It almost feels like it's trying to lean on this artwork level thing of being like, look, man, that's just how art works. But then I think if you asked a couple different art students about it, they would be like, not really, like not completely how this works, you know? But Yeah, like just to get this away from sexuality, I think yeah. this would also apply to really anything that is like really weird or intense, you know, like say, you know, I made a video like a comedy video where I peed myself. Some people could find that to be a lot. I think it'd be like fair to notify your partner like, hey, I'm doing this video. I know it's weird. It's just a dumb bit. You know, just like in this situation, I think it would be, you know, not fair and it would it could potentially be a deal breaker if that's how far it would go. But like, uh, I think that I think he should have let her clear it. I think that would be asshole ish given the artist context, you know, especially if the friend's motivations, you know, seem clean. It didn't seem like he was like just trying to see his girlfriend naked or something shady. Yeah. Um, but I think that to me is is why uh, and it seems like we're on the same page here. AITA for letting my BS friends draw me naked. Well, that as the title, literally, we would probably say not the asshole, but for no. not telling her boyfriend, not clearing this, not communicating and then essentially ambushing him with the information and then be like, what? It's art. I'm saying well, I'm saying almost well, I'd say you're the asshole being the girlfriend and the friend. These are two people that probably should have said something. I think. Yeah, I, I don't think like I would even brand anybody an asshole. I would just be like, it seems like all of you have poor communication. Like you guys just have bad communication skills and you should be more communicate with each other about this stuff. You don't stuff. think this is assholeish? But you, like, I mean, no, like I just don't want to give anybody, you know, the, the, the scarlet A of like asshole instead of adultery, I guess. It's not that big of a deal, yeah. Eli. I would say you, if if I had to pick an asshole in this situation, yes, it's, the, yes. it's the friend who asked the girlfriend to do it and didn't notify anybody and didn't, because mm. it, it leans towards that thing of it's one of those things where it's like, if he, if he was like, I didn't even think about asking you, I'd be like, that's impossible as a human empath. Like if you're not sociopathic, it would cross your mind to ask me about it. Of course. So like, then it turns into the thing where it's like, you're not asking me because you know it is weird and you know that I, you probably yes. should, but you don't want to ask me. And then, yeah, it also depends on the know. situation. Because then you, you, they could be like what you said, where the guy's just like, our model canceled last minute. I know that, you know, your girlfriend like needs some money or whatever. It pays well. That would be fine. Yeah. But if it's I like, don't know if we had a month to get somebody, and then it's like, couldn't find right. anybody. that Why her? Yeah. Well, I guess I feel, I don't know if asking, I'm comfortable saying asking, right? Because then we start to get into the boyfriend kind of like controlling her. But I do feel like a notify is required. Yeah. Like, hey man, just so you know, uh, you know, I'm trying to help your girl out. You know, we're, we're doing this naked mall thing. So I'm going to ask her. And he's like, okay. You know, that gives him a chance to respond and have a reaction. I don't know that I like the concept of advocating an ask because it's like, that's going to be her call. It's a call that she has the right to make yeah. and to balance with her boyfriend. So nonetheless, I think we do agree. You seem hesitant to throw out the Scarlet A. That's fine. But oh, I think yeah. we kind of agree on the fundamentals here. I think I may have portrayed it as more like permission based than I intended. It's basically just like, the question is just like, why doesn't everybody know about this? Like why, exactly. why is it being exactly. revealed in this way that suggests like that makes, and if it's innocent, why make it seem like it's not by not just yeah. communicating it? Yeah, that was what made it dirty. So I think we agree AITA for letting my BS friends draw me naked. You're not throwing out the Scarlet A, but we do nonetheless agree. YTA, the girlfriend and the friend of the boyfriend. Would I be the asshole for not paying for my son's art college? I, 52M, have one son, 17M, and one daughter, 30F. Big spread there. 13 mm -hmm. year spread. My daughter graduated from her local uni with a master's degree in business and has a small startup that has grown tremendously. She's engaged in the major breadwinner in her relationship, which makes me quite proud. My son, on the other hand, he's less academically interested. Throughout high school, he wanted to take only art and music courses. I didn't let him. And unfortunately, had to resort to my house, my rules. However, he says now he's going to uni. He doesn't have to listen to me and that he'll move out to one of his friends if I try the quote unquote my house, my rules crap, as he calls it. He says that he's going to an art uni and that he has already sent out apps to several and gotten offers. So I did the only thing I could, revoking my offer of paying for his university. It breaks my heart, but I feel like I have no choice. I told my son that either he gets a degree that will enable him to have a good chance at getting a job he can live off of, or he can find some other way to pay. 
day. My son was understandably pissed when I told him this. He called me a shitty father and stormed off to his room. Before you flood the comments with YTA, hear me out. I did the same thing my son wants to do. Got an art degree against the wishes of my parents. I was young and excited, but it was not to be. Art and music weren't paying my bills, and I got into astronomical debt. Then I was evicted from my apartment, and I was homeless for a year. I had to drag myself back to my parents and beg them to pay for me to go to uni again, this time to get a business degree. Got one, graduated, got an office job, and worked hard until I got promotions. Then I met my late wife, and we had the kids. Okay, didn't need your whole life story, OP. He's just really proud of it. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, he needed this. So you see, I just don't want my son to make the same mistakes I did. I want him to be able to hold his head high, knowing he can pay his own way and start a family if he so pleases. I don't want to be controlling, but he needs to put his head on straight and do what's best for him. A-I-T-A. This one's way easier for me. Yeah, really? this guy's an asshole, I think. Hmm. I mean, if you want to talk about the, the funding or whatever, but like for me at the point where he was like, so this kid isn't academically interested, whatever that happens, like, but he said he wouldn't even allow him to take art and music in high school. Um, yeah, you're right. Which it says he wanted to take only art and music. I don't think there's any high schools that allow you to purely take art classes unless you're at some very weird high school. Um, right, right. Being concerned about financial futures, like, I guess a natural parent thing, but like at this point, you're like forbidding them from like pursuing hobbies, which is just like ha taking art and music in high school isn't going to do, if anything, it'd be like extracurriculars. Like they'd be like, right. good, you know, you're like additional interests and stuff. I mean, this, this, this kid is clearly like hates this because he's like covertly submitting to art schools and they're not easy to get into. I don't know what art universities there are, but yeah, I would assume he has to submit a portfolio. He's gotten offers, which means he's like decent at least. Like, I think there's a way to, there's a way to do this. It's just very draconian. There's a way to do this that isn't, you know, you, you can share your experiences with your kid without literally like shunting them into a different life path. Well, I think I'm with you on the high school thing. That seems really messed up. It's like, this is a free education that he has, you know, his own agency over. It's provided by the government. Let him do whatever he wants to do. I don't know if I have the same level of issues with his college funding, conditional college funding. It's kind of like he's trying to urge you to get a practical degree, something that will pay for itself. You know, I especially feel like nowadays, this isn't really that bad of advice. You can get in a lot of debt. I think for business, yeah. I think it also is coming at a time where like all college degrees feel worthless. <laughs> weirdly right, right um and i mean yeah I get, like i have a bfa and it's not useful so i get that part of it i i could i think it's the way it's done because there's a way to be like you know you don't necessarily need like art school to be good at art you could pursue it in other ways right but there's the fact that there's no effort made here at all to find a compromise find things to do because like one of the things I, I didn't have anything like this my parents were never like we're not gonna pay for it what i did was i went to a, a state school that had mm -hmm. an art school with within it. I went to University mm -hmm. of Michigan art and A&D school. So that was sort of, we never got into like a fight about it or anything. It was kind because of, I kind of felt the similar way, but like you could find, so maybe, and if it's a funding thing, it's like, okay, if you want to do this, like, let's figure out a way that we're both happy here where you could maybe do that. Go to a state school where, you know, like I went to an art school, but also if I have a resume or something, I can put University of Michigan, which is like a good college. So it's not, sure. or be like, if you want to do that, you know, but find a college. It's like, I think it's one thing if they're like, oh, I want to go to RISD or whatever. That if they want to yeah, go to yeah. some ex insanely expensive private art school, he's 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 doing he says he's doing this from personal experience of his experience having an art degree and stuff. But it seems like he's not sharing any of the. You'd think that he'd have more empathy and and memory of like how he Absolutely. felt when he was that age. Absolutely, and he wanted to do it. And it's like that, or it's like I just think there's a lot of compromises that could be found. That this dude seems to just be very much like yes, no, like yep. like even in high school, the kids like I want to take art classes. Don't go. You can't take art classes. Go. All right, you can sign up for an art class but you also have to sign up for a finance class or whatever like right you know or that would be like you're gonna go to art school okay but i mean honestly at this point with how fucking hard it is to get a job it'd be like go to art school also become like a licensed electrician like go get like right, go to trade right. school like get make sure that yeah. you have something you can do because i think I having think you're right and i think somebody who had like if they were like a you know whatever you get into the like a licensed electrician that sort of thing like i think that would be more useful in some some liberal arts degrees that people I know have like it'd be easier to get make money off of that I mean he wants yeah, to go into business so that's its own thing but yeah I think he could they could play out in a couple of ways but I think really what we're picking up from this OP is he's very rigid he wants it to be his way or the highway my house
house my rules yes yeah, stated he explicitly rigid in, yeah, yeah he's rigid in high school and like he wants it to go down a certain way and you're right he's not deploying any empathy even though he absolutely could and he's just insisting that it go down this way his son is frustrated because he's not being heard at all his meet his his needs aren't being met they weren't met in high school mm -hmm. i think i think you're right i think this one ultimately is a no-brainer would i be the asshole for not paying for my son's art college i think that's not why i think that that it may be a compromise would be a watered down version but i think this guy is the asshole you with me yeah i'm with you on that it's just and that sort of thing i i mean shitty parent is like an absolute heart heart you know blow to the heart it's like it's yeah. you know when you're a kid like to tell your parent they're bad is like how you just end an argument because it will crush them. right but like some of this stuff is i think bad like it's like you just don't seem to be nurturing interests and it's like exactly i don't know this seems like how you make some office space type dude who's like there's also beliefs i have and all that about like you know you could talk about all like work to live live to work thing and it's also a guy that's like he seems to not only believe that you need to be in business or whatever but you need to be rich like yeah, he's exactly. very obsessed with this like startup that's like making people rich but it's like yeah it's like go to community college take some art classes there you go you know cheap yeah. stuff and he's not supporting anything yeah or go get this degree get a different degree i'll help you like let's figure out whether you do some sort of correspondence art car course like something like that you know there's lots of there's lots of avenues that he refuses to explore that i think is very diminutive 100 percent. ata for calling my depressed brother a total jobless loser yeah yeah i know the title sounds bad but this is what happened i just want to give more context because everyone's calling me an asshole and in my head i feel justified but now i'm not so sure we'll accept final judgment oh wow great start op so my older brother and i 27 f have never been that i guess he oh and i 27 f so this is a this is a female writing okay i've never been that close because he's always been the favorite and i'm that forgotten middle child my brother is basically the ultimate man child he's like the stereotypical edgy teenager who thinks all capitalism is evil and society would be saved if a communist dictator ruled us all not joking except he's 30 i'd be fine with all this except i'm always made to be the target of his jokes how i'm a chump for pulling long hours at the office because i'm enabling a broken capitalist system you get the gist last year my parents pulled me aside and told me my bro has been diagnosed with depression and to be gentle with him even though he targets me they say he's just jealous but i'm sick of his attitude i don't agree with his worldview but i hate that he targets me as the world's problem anyways last night we had the 12,947th fight again <laughs> After he called me some names or whatever, and he tried to defend some crazy communist theory he read in some internet corner. Wow. Most mm. boomer sentence I've read in some time. Which she's posting on Reddit. It's like, this is the corner. <laughs> right, right. What do you right. mean? This it's just a different corner. subreddit. <laughs> yeah. I told him to F off. He told me to shut up. Then I let loose and called him a fucking 30 year old chronic loser. I said society's not to blame for him being a jobless loser. And that even if communism succeeded, he'd still be living at home as a 30 year old broke virgin except maybe he'd lose a few pounds working in the fields and then masturbating to anime every day. Jesus. I was waiting for anime to come up. I was like, anime is definitely involved. You sensed it. Yep. It felt cathartic as hell. But look on everyone. But the look on everyone's faces. Now people are calling for me to apologize because my brother doesn't know any better and I should be the mature one. A-I-T-A. It's a lot. There's a lot to process with this one. I feel like it's a common conflict and like experience. It kind of mimics the last one, right? Because she she's killing it. She's the business. She's the business sis. And mm -hmm. he's the man child brother. I mean, I will say that, you know, he's repeatedly taking shots at her. You know, it's yeah. not fair to call her a chump for pulling long hours. She only kind of lists that joke, but she says she's repeatedly targeted. That's you know, that's that's not a good dynamic that he's fostering. So he's repeatedly coming at her and that's they're having negative interactions. She's not doing that. She's not the one who made him a loser. Yeah. You know? Well, the thing that is there because you mentioned it was like, oh, this one has, you know, like we're, we're both on Twitter, right? We're, there's the there's the, the leftist discourse and stuff. And that's what like rings really false to me is that if this guy mm. actually was interested in like, which it, see, it says that he is and all that, but it's like it's not leftist or, or you know, socialist to accuse people people or put the burden on people who are part of the system it's not her it's not her fault for working in a broken system like that's not the target to take like that's that's just not right. to me like you're not having a productive discussion at all to be like you're an idiot for having to work a lot right the discussion if you want to have it with your parents or whatever is like this you you know you should probably be like i don't know what she does talk more about like unions and stuff where it's like if i knew somebody who was working long hours at the office you know like works 
you know, like 10 hours a day or whatever, like eight hours a week, it'd be more like that's not healthy and it shouldn't be encouraged. It's not, you're an idiot. Right. Yeah. She's a worker. Like literally this is the champion, the, the cause that is championed by the left is the people who have to work ultimately. Right. I mean, and that's a misconception a lot of people have where it's like, oh, am I an idiot? Cause I work. And everyone's like, no, we're not saying you're an idiot. We're saying you shouldn't have, you know, it's people who are like, they'd be like, I work 60, I work 70 hours a week for 40 years. And that because of that, I'm able to, and it's like, we're not saying that was dumb. We're saying you shouldn't have had to work 70 hours right. a week. And they have had benefits and a union and yeah. been protected. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. It's like people get fucked or like, like they just like don't want to ever feel like they did shouldn't have they did something that they didn't have to do. So it's right. like because it's this because it's something that they've already done. It's like, you know, it's but it's that they was like, well, wouldn't you like, you know, that's what people say that sort of thing. It's like it's a dad or something. It's like I worked at the mill 70 hours a week or which even if you're like your dad worked at the mill, probably had a strong union and probably like some factory workers like in America were like, oh, you know, you probably got a gold watch and like a good pension. But, you know, it's like, shouldn't you instead want the next generation to not have to do that? Like to have a more reasonable, right. that's a rabbit hole. We don't need to go all down there. So I think that that he's being disingenuous there. So it's like, but uh, I also, because we were talking about the depression thing, I can get like why he's lashing out, I guess. And it's all, there's also a bit of it where it's like, it's hard to deal with like, like, it's one of those things where it's like you're supposed to be nice and I mean gentle's a weird word for depression. You know, like it's it's hard to do that while they're attacking you, lashing yeah, exactly. out at you. Even though I think exactly. that is a part of being depressed, that that's probably part of the cause. You also have to ask, like, what are you doing to treat it? Because it's depression is a chemical imbalance, you know, like that whole thing. It's like there's not you need to be taking steps to 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 help him out as well, you know? Like it's not just leave him alone. It's like, all right, well, let's get you, you know, it's good that they care. It's good to have parents that like at least don't write it off as just being like, like, oh, you're just lazy. You know, there's a lot of, it seems to be a lot of sniping and arguing and not a lot of like progress. Yeah, I mean, progress. he repeatedly snipes her and then she finally has a meltdown after the, you know, 12,000 fight, as she puts it. You know, she does take some brutal shots, repeatedly calls him a loser, calls him a broke virgin, drops the anime thing. Yeah. You know, I kind of don't blame her because she has kind of been worn down over time, but like, like this was this this did reach a point of being like straight up mean mm -hmm. um and i don't know just based on the quotes like i think it's a lot less offensive to say you're a chump for pulling long hours and you're enabling a broken capitalist system it is annoying and it's grating but calling someone a chronic jobless loser yeah i think has a lot more of a personal attack you know i'm sure he's like kind of like negging her constantly and he's been doing it for a while but like i am ready to say like she did go too far and i kind of feel like what you said like yeah he He's depressed, but that doesn't give you a right to be shitty to everyone around you indefinitely. Like you can still be yeah. an asshole in that situation. And not in the way that of the title of the podcast, asshole, but it's like you can be depressed and also just be an asshole. Like Absolutely. you can be both. Absolutely. Uh, which sounds like maybe he's mixing both, where it's like, yeah, you have a, a medical thing that you should that it affects your mindset and you know, like how you're able to function, but you could also just be unpleasant. Like you can be both. But yeah, I, I mean what she said is definitely also. Also, it keys in on like a lot of stuff that if you're depressed is probably stuff that you think about yourself all the time. Absolutely. Super hurtful stuff. I think that ultimately we agree on this one. Probably AITA for calling my depressed brother a total jobless loser. I'm ready to say everyone sucks here. I don't like her and I don't like him. <laughs> They're both kind of fucked up to each other. Yeah, I, it's I, I like I said, I can empathize with the the guy. Like I remember when I like uh, like I'm on, you know, I take like medication for depression and like definitely it turns you into a bit of an asshole when you're not medicated because you just mm -hmm. are so upset with yourself and you just take it out on other people and you just don't feel like very connected. I mean, there's a lot of different ways that can manifest. But yeah, it just seems like a, such a bad situation where and maybe I mean, he could even be prodding her because he like wants her to see it's one of those things where he's almost like, say it, say it, say that I'm useless. Like, right. Right. It's weird. It's just it's just a bad I hope I, I like I'll take a positive spin on it. The fact that his parents have like looked into him being diagnosed with depression stuff. I hope that this is a dark moment that they move forward and out of. But yeah, like is she is it an asshole move to call him that? Yeah, it's mean. She definitely was mean. I don't think it's a character damning moment, you know? It's not something where it's like Yeah, no, she's not necessarily a bad person. And she was worn down as well. So I think we agree on that one. They're both assholes. So before we get into this last one, I just I'm curious. So let's just go into a little bit. You were adopted, but you were raised by yeah. Jewish people. So you do identify as Jewish. That's very interesting to me. I I mean, I was adopted as a 
I don't remember being adopted. I was adopted immediately. Like my, I know, I don't know much about my birth parents, but they were, I, what I know from what I've been told and stuff, if I wanted to like, you know, unseal the files I could, but I really don't want to. Cause it, to me, that just seems like a can of worms. Like it was basically my parents were like college students in Georgia and they were like 18 and sure. too religious to not have me, you know? So I was like adopted as a baby. So I don't have, I don't know anything except my parents. So I like, yeah, I identify as Jewish. I also identify as like, like I'm not even somebody who would say like, I've never said the words my adoptive parents in my life. That's sure. not something I consider or consider them to be. You know, They're it's interesting because like Steve Jobs always had a huge chip on his shoulder about it. And he was also adopted uh, immediately, but you never, you never felt any kind of way about it. You're like, these are just my folks and what's, you know, who cares really? Yeah. I mean, it helps that they're, they were great and they're still great. When so, did they tell were, you? I knew from day one, like not what? day one. I mean, I was a baby boy and Smart I wouldn't have baby. understood, but like there was never a time where they sat me down in my knowledge and were like, here's the deal. No way. How did you pick up on it? I think they just, as they raised me, like that was always part of, because I do have, you know, I do have like vague memories from when I was very young of like them openly talking about when they picked me up. Like mm. they they'd say stuff. And it's like the day that we got you is the, you know, it was very sweet. I mean, like the day oh, that we got you is like one of the I happiest days of our lives. I mean, I guess I could have been a, turned out to be a big asshole and been really mad about it or something. But for me, it was never like, I mean, I doubt Steve Jobs. I didn't watch any of his mo the movies about him. Right? I don't know his shit except that he was like really mean to his daughter, I guess. <laughs> That's the only thing I heard. Yeah, he sucked. He sucked. I could see a way if you're home if your home situation was bad that you'd be like I wish that this and knowing there was another option but for me I was like this rules I get to play fucking Pokemon all day like why would I be <laughs> mad about this well it seems like they almost framed it in a way too that made it seem less alienating you know I love I love that I think this might be a tactic for anyone looking to I think adopt it's the right instead way to of, do it yeah instead of dropping it as news just be like yeah it was the best day of our lives the day we picked you up and then it's you're you are telling them straight up but you're framing it in this way where it's like it yeah. almost sounds better I don't, I don't know that that's how my mother would describe having me she was like it was horrible your father was <laughs> sleeping you know what i mean like it's a great story I, yeah i have i haven't done because i i used to do it all the time i've tried to like but i had all bit about that that was just like basically you know if kids ever make fun of or whatever it's like dude my parents picked me like they walked into you were a building chosen. Like, you were you yeah, were one like, of the chosen people truly a chosen person in the most literal sense i get i get why people would wait but it does seem like especially the longer you wait the longer it's like weird or like the more weird it's gonna be you know there's other stuff about my parents that they shared with me randomly much later that i was like why did you not tell me this mm. you know they're like like i remember one time i was probably like 17 and my mom made um chicken curry for dinner mm -hmm. and she never made it before and i was eating and i was like this is really good like i don't expect my parents are both you know like white normal really not normal that sounds weird as fuck but they're like you wouldn't expect my mom to bust out like a very good chicken curry you know what i mean right. and it was like really good and i was like this is really good and she was like oh yeah i learned how to cook indian food with my first husband was british and they oh, had boy. never mentioned being married before and then i found out that, like both of them have mar been married before and that one didn't matter to me as much but i feel like if, if that time frame and that bomb had been replaced with you're adopted i could see how someone could because you know that's that's the the cliche is that your world falls apart you, right. you know and that just never happened so i love it now do you get any pushback have you had any interactions around the fact of like because you know you don't look jewish i i i think you had told me before that you were so it rang familiar when you told me yeah but do, yeah have you gotten any like oh well you're not really jewish kind of bullshit from anyone not any of the circles because even my parents are very reform Judaism, like the reform it. judaism so yeah like nobody the the synagogues we went to and stuff like no one would do any say anything like say shit like that and it was like already because my mom's not jewish she was I think she converted. I don't know if she officially did it. Interesting. So it was always, I, I also celebrated Hanukkah and Christmas because that was my mom's one thing. She's like, I don't really care about other Christian stuff, but she's like, but I do want to have Christmas. So I always, Hanukkah for me, I always got like bad gifts. Not bad, but I get like, you know, like stuff I needed. I'd get like a pencil case for school. And then sure. Christmas is when I get like a new ga video game or whatever. Bro, but, I think um, you got a great deal. You got a, a pretty good a deal. Christmas and Hanukkah, loving yeah. parents that were seasoned, yeah. you know, they were, they stay and they're still together. Yeah. And and yeah, and the only thing that ever came close to that was just a really, we went to a, a service, you know, I think it was like one of the high holy days, probably like Passover or something. And we went to a, a, you know, Hebrew Jewish service, the synagogue. And one of the rabbis, which keep in mind, like I said, this is a very reform congregation. So it's like very relaxed, gave a sermon about 
mixed marriages and how they weren't like good for Judaism. Oh boy. And we just actually stopped going to services after that. My wow. ma- that, my parents were like, I think I was probably too young for them to like truly explain to me how mad they were. But we just, for me, I was just like, we don't have to go to services anymore because you don't love services when you're a kid. Great. Another yeah. win for you. Sounds like you had a great yeah. childhood, man. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty good. That's going to kill my comedy career if I'm revealed. That it was. <laughs> well, we'll be taking that into this final situation here. Oh, yeah. AITA for not adopting my wife's kid. I, 27M, used to have a wonderful relationship with the woman I love, 26F. However, five years ago, she got drunk, had a one-night stand, and got pregnant from it. Wow. Damn, that is a heavy opening. Can't be mine. I can't have kids due to a horseback riding injury when I was a teen. Wow, (laughs) this is a story. Didn't get the guy's name. No way to find him, so he's out of the picture. My wife decided to keep it. Yikesies. And we almost went through a divorce, but couples therapy made us decide to try again. Doesn't seem like it's going to take, I don't know, reading It's not looking good. (laughs) Since, uh, yeah, we're still in therapy now since I still have a hard time trusting her. So she had her son. She had her son. Oh boy. We talked a lot about it. I made it clear that I'm okay taking on a step-parent role, but I wasn't willing to fully be his dad. I wouldn't adopt him, but I would help raise him and get him off to college. My wife agreed, became a stay-at-home mom so she could take care of him with help from her parents. And I've pretty much been the fun uncle-like guy. I play with him buy games try my best not to resent him and i'm in therapy for this and mostly just stay out of the way of my wife's parenting he even calls me uncle instead of dad he knows i'm not his dad and is just happy to play video games with me and chill wow is this you bro this sounds a lot like you (laughs) yeah my not son that comes over (laughs) well recently my wife has started talking about me adopting him something i'm not willing to do i made it clear that if anything happened he would go live with her parents and i'd send child support if they couldn't take him i wouldn't put him in foster care or anything but i also wasn't willing to take on the responsibility of being his father when I'm not. I'm happy being an uncle to another man's kid since that's what life threw at me. This upset her and she's been trying to find a way to force me into adopting him. She's even manipulating the poor kid saying he should start calling me dad instead of uncle like he has his entire life which is upsetting and confusing to the poor boy. The situation has worked for the last five years and I don't know why she's trying to change something that isn't broken or force me into a role I told her years ago I wasn't willing to accept which she was fine with until just recently. A-I-T-A. Yeah. I don't, do you usually read the updates? We'll read the, we'll read the update after we explore oh, okay. it a bit. Um, it's This is so fucked. <laughs> like, this this is, is a classic A-I-T-A where it's just like, oh my God, dude. What is your um, life, bro? What is this guy's life? It's also crazy for him to say, this is upsetting and confusing the poor boy. It was like, you called him it earlier. Like This guy's a monster. I just don't even know what this relationship is either. Because it's like... What are you, are you going to, like, are you married to her now? It seems like he is. So it's like, yeah. how are you married, but you don't live there? What, what is this? Like, what? I, you know what I see this is, man? This is, this is a man and, and a woman ultimately who are too weak to realize it's over and pull away from each other and stop like being to- massively toxic influences on each other's life. Because honestly, like, when I first read She Got Drunk Had a One Night Stand, I'm like, this is if this is what it comes back to is ridiculous. But then I'm like, oh, she got pregnant. Okay, that does change things. Yeah, that's going to be a deal breaker for me. Like, I am out, you know? Like, if, if my if my girlfriend were to do this and just get drunk and had a one night stand, and we actually used to talk about this, I'd be like, you know, I would be livid. And, but I don't think it would be a deal breaker for me because that's not the same to me as like premeditated cheating. Yeah, it's, well, what's weird about it is... Getting really drunk and having a one night stand is a horrible, horrific mistake. Yes. But because of how biology works, it is now a mistake that is truly impossible to move beyond because Absolutely. it is present at all times. Absolutely. That's that's more than a sentence there. Like she got drunk yeah. out of one night stand and got pregnant. Anyways, fast forward. It's like, no, you need to spend more time there. You need to figure out what the fuck is going on. Like, well, and what happened on that horse? This guy can't have kids because of the horse incident. I got a lot of questions yeah. for this guy, but yeah, I mean, look, I, I really think that he then is like too weak to leave her, even though I think that this is an absolute deal breaker for anyone i would be like yo like i love you you made you did make a mistake that honestly i probably could forgive but because of the consequences of the mistake you have effectively changed the course of your life and i'm not going to be a part of it you know it was your fault you did a dumb thing and you you know i don't want to say ruin but you have impacted the trajectory here of how your life will go and like i'm not going to do it and i think that's basically what this guy is saying except he's not breaking up with her he's staying involved i don't know 
why she still betrayed the shit out of him. The thing of like, I don't want to adopt him. And then he seems kind of hung up on like legal implications of adoption, which is like, if she dies, he has to take care of the kid. Weird, weird route. But it's also like, I mean, this is not obviously good for the kid at all. But it's like, yeah, you couldn't make it clear that you don't want him. I don't know. It's like, because he's like, I'm I'm a stepdad role. But then he's like, I'm okay taking on a stepparent role. But then what he describes, this does not sound like a stepparent role. This sounds like an insane fake uncle role. Mm -hmm. Is not what people do. Like, step stepparent role isn't just playing video games with somebody. Stepparent is still like, you still go to like PTA meetings and shit, don't you? Absolutely. Like, I, like when you you're live... supposed to like, it's stepparent. It's like, that, it's weird because he's like i think it'd be one thing if he was actually taking on a step parent role and was like i'm not, not. comfortable legally adopting mm -hmm. right now but it doesn't seem like he is he's like i'm comfortable taking on a step parent role but that means i don't uh, i'm not there for his birthdays and i don't have to talk to him and it's like that's not what you're saying what you're saying is yeah. that you just want to refuse to acknowledge the existence of this child yep uh except for mario kart once in a while it, it doesn't even sound like he's like i think there are uncles who are closer with their absolutely calling him an it i mean it's it's her kid, it, you know, it's, 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 there's no ownership there. I think what they're, they're in, this is, this is where I'm lost. I know how I feel about him. I'm a little confused about her. So she's in a predicament, no doubt, because she's basically looking at being a single parent. That's not ideal. She has a level of stability from this guy. And then she's accepted this essentially really shitty deal where they're married, but apparently they don't live together. I wasn't actually a hundred percent clear on that. Do they live together? She lives with her parents. It's. Uh, I, I play with him, buy him games. My wife, wife agreed to this, st became a stay-at-home mom. Yeah, so she could take care of him with help from her parents. So she lives with her parents. He lives somewhere else. So they have a bizarre marriage. I mean, I've never even heard of something like this. This is do, so strange. Maybe they do live together, but it's... Well, no, but then how... Where's where's the boy? He lives with the parents? He doesn't Yeah, because that's them. even crazier if it's like, you're going to sleep under my roof, but not... No, no. Like... He the, they, the wife and the son live with the parents. So they have a bizarre relationship set up already. I'm not sure. This, this is where I'm not sure is like, is she committing a sin by staying with him because i think she is in a precarious position right it's hard to be a single mother you know she's yeah. got a decent guy i mean honestly i i do think she's settling i think i would just be like screw off you're not ready to commit to being a dad you're not you're not accepting who i am you know like just to, just to take this to a place where like she's a single mom and then meets a guy and the guy's like hey there's no way i'm gonna care for your kid i would think any emotionally healthy single mother would say okay well fuck off you're not gonna be yeah. my primary partner because i have a kid like that's that's part of the gig baby yeah it's it's if you took the if you took the history out and this was a date and you on a shoot they want a date and she's like by the way i have a kid and he's like never gonna call him a child you'd be like well this is see you around like that's yeah. not gonna work but they have this fucked up history the horse and the horseback riding injury is just such like a weird it makes <laughs> the whole thing seem i mean I, this is so weird you don't want to say fake but it's like it's like harder to process because that's so insane it's so um, insane and god yeah it's just like <laughs> it's like just you guys need to someone needs to like separate you like there's no way this goes well that's the thing too it's like track this out i think that's maybe the thing is she was like maybe he'll come around on it and then right but at this point i would be like you've got real problems with this so that's not gonna work anymore i mean the, the like adoption thing I, I i think if i don't know it's like i think if he was from what he seems like if, if they were if he was doing a, a good job as a step parent you could have that conversation where it's like you know it's a big legal step and like usually mm -hmm. it's like a big thing too like you know it's like you see videos of it that's like i've showing pa paperwork it's like you're now my son so i think there would be more forgiveness of being like okay you need more time but he's already being so sh shitty and strange that it's like of course he, he won't even talk to he's calling your kid it of course yeah. he's not gonna adopt the kid i think it's gotta yeah there's gotta be like a cut cut bait sort of thing where i also i don't know what's going on like she seems like she's not having a phenomenal time no this is likewise such, yeah this is not a good setup all right so we do have an update from op who wrote after reading everything i told my wife i was leaving and pursuing divorce i think i've been ready to do so for a while but needed the push this has led to a complete meltdown but i stayed firm packed everything up and moved in with my brother across town i contact the landlord oh this is confusing i contact there to tell so him they do live together because he's paying their rent for two months rent after that everything needs to be switched to her i am so confused 
use then. So they were living together then. It they sounds were like he's living paying together for their with him. Place. But I don't know how you could live together and still continue this relation, like how he is describing their interactions. You know what? This makes me this makes me know how I feel about her because that then that's just like this is madness. So you live with a man who refuses to function as the father of your son in any way, and mm-hmm. that's so confusing and weird for a child. I think it's unacceptable and bizarre. Yeah, it's you got I think it's just so unhealthy that it's like you just have to extricate yourself from that situation, which I can understand why it would be hard, but this guy's to me it's like this guy's a huge asshole, but you need to realize that. Like you need to get the fuck out. Absolutely. And he's and he literally said exactly how I read this, which is that he has been wanting to leave, but he needed a push. Like these are just like two weak people who won't like leave this thing that has just become horrifically toxic. Top Reddit comment, uh Shmom B O eight eight writes ESH, everything about this is terrible. Her cheating, you purposely distancing, your, distancing yourself from the kid who's not yours through no fault of his own. Not to mention you being the only father figure he's ever known. Dads don't need to be blood. You all sound like assholes, except the little one, obviously, who I just feel sorry for. Sort your shit out for his sake. I think that kind of summarizes where I've yeah. landed. It feels like neither of them are really putting the kid first. Exactly. It's like he's being a massive piece of shit about it, but it's also like, at a certain point, the, the mom is like, you gotta think about the kid. Like, yep. you have to do something like, because this is, I mean, just imagine the therapy. You know, it's not somebody walking and be like, I don't think my dad wanted me. It's like, yeah, my dad called me it and like didn't. It's unreal. Yeah. I think we see eye to eye here. AATA for not adopting my wife's child. Her, well, her for cheating, I guess, but really her for not prioritizing the kid. Him for being weak and not extricating himself and then treating the kid horrifically and essentially treating her horrifically and kind of her for putting up for that in the context where it's like obviously a major disservice to the kid. I think we agree everyone sucks here. Yep. Except the kid, of course. God Eli, bless yes, not the kid. <laughs> yeah. Eli, it's been great to have you on, man. Um, it's been oh, fantastic. It's been Tell these people where to find you. Anything you want to plug? Uh, you can find me on Twitter. Just my name, Eli Uden, E-L-I-Y-U-D-I-N. If you're a Twitch person, I stream on Twitch at pig underscore dog. Uh, yeah, you can listen to a podcast I do with my friends Patty Mo and Kath Barbadoro called What a Time to Be Alive. That comes out every Monday. Um, and then, yeah, I do a show called TV and D with some uh, friends of mine uh, where we play D&D as different TV casts. And you can watch that live on Twitch on Thursdays, or you can watch it all on YouTube. Just tv and d those are my big things and yeah some when the world allows it i'll probably do comedy again look out for that i guess what's your what's your tweet you had a tweet that went crazy viral i remember i shared it on my insta story now i can't remember the topic it was like crazy viral was it the doctor's cocaine in your blood thing no no that's an old one i love that one too. that was newer than that it was political oh the congress one yeah 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 where they were like it was like i was like yeah i was like looking up the the salary of congress and being like they're getting paid six hundred thousand dollars to decide if you deserve four hundred dollars or something nice yeah. nice that was good people love to debate that it's good to have a viral tweet where people feel very uh, obligated to message you about it it's good i think my dms are still i still uh, don't get back to people because i'm just like yeah there's too much in there still from that like it's, wow it's just clogged up probably shouldn't have open dms but that's so cool i wonder if i've opened. i didn't get any tweets when oh i don't have it enabled i didn't get any tweets when my tweet went viral oh man uh i opened dms probably in my head i'm like business opportunities but that's not (laughs) i just didn't even know i didn't even know i guess i still got a lot to learn about twitter (laughs) well follow eli on twitter site yeah follow me on the terrible terrible site twitter ruin ruin your lives with us but uh anyway thanks a lot man and uh, we'll see you guys next time